Hi boys and girls, this is Kim from Library and I've got a really special book to read to you today. You won't actually f find this book anywhere because it's out of print and it's my absolute favourite. It's taken me three years to find it. I've looked in libraries, I've looked through schools, I've looked online, um, through secondhand shops, through op shops, everywhere and I've been looking for three years and finally someone um, messaged me and said it was on eBay as a second-hand book. So finally I've got it and why this book is so special, it's a message in this book that I absolutely love. So it's called Junkyard Dogs. It's a book that's great for all ages, children and adults, as many picture story books are. It's written by a lady called Margaret Balderson. She's actually passed away a couple of years ago, but she wrote a lot of books. The illustrator who did these amazing drawings and pictures is Janine Dawson. So junk out dogs. Just quick look at the blurb. So we turn it over to the back. It'll give you an idea what the story's about. Billy, Bolly, Bella and Blue live in a fancy house with fancy cars and a fancy garden but they have absolutely nothing to play with and nothing to do. Across town, Molly and Moo live near the tip. It is full of interesting things to explore and there are no fences to keep them inside. One faithful day, Molly and Moo decide to help. Billy, Bolly, Bella and Blue have a little fun. I'm sure you'll enjoy this story as much as I love it. Okay. So. If we open up, we look at the, this page here. It's called the imprint page. And it's actually, if you can see, it was printed in 2003. So the book's 17 years old. Okay, Junkyard Dogs, that's the title page. And let's start the book. Just make it so it's easiest for you to see it. I think that's probably just as easy. Billy, Bolly, Bella and Blue, who lived up the town from Molly and Moo in a two-storey house with the very best view and a shiny green lawn and Ferrari or two, were bathed every week in La Prochetta shampoo and had nothing but nothing whatever to do. So beautiful house, the four dogs. Okay. There was never a walk, there was never a ball. In fact, few people knew that they lived there at all. Mustn't bark, mustn't play. Mustn't dig, mustn't brawl. Mustn't run, mustn't jump. Mustn't chase, Mustn't sprawl. Yes, these were the orders from Businessman Hall, who kept them for show when rich friends came to call. Now, Molly and Moo, on the edge of town, whose adventures had won them wide dogly renown, hung out in a shack that was all tumbled down and slept in old petrol drums, rusted and brown, on beds of rough sacking, not plush idle down. So the beds weren't soft at all. They just lived in an old place with ruins. But had plenty of freedom to frolic and clown. So it looks like they have lots of fun. Jim, their person, wore blue jeans. He hadn't a suit, and their home was a junkyard of once treasured loot. There were things that went rattle and things that went too. There was sand, there was horse poo and gravel and suit. And chickens to chase from an old hold newt. So from their point of view, well, a dog's life was beaut. They had lots of fun.
One day, when this two some was out on a spree, both up to no good, you can take it from me, said our moo to our molly, molly while scratching a flea, it's, it's a terrible shame, moll, now don't you agree, when there's some that are locked up and some that are free, at which molly winked and said, moo, follow me. So which ones are locked up? Yes, the dogs from the rich house, they're not allowed to go anywhere, are they? I wonder what they're going to do. Do you think they might get up to some mischief together? Through the town, this bold twosome went trippity trip till our mole said to Moo, this is posh people strip. Cripes, living up here, Moo, would give me the pip. They just love being free. And at the last gate, she stopped and said, well, this will unclip. Hey, you there inside, give your people the slip. Look lively, you dandies. We're off to the tip. Do you think they'll want to go? Mm. They're pretty bored in there. What do you think? And the pictures tell it all. What do you think? Do they look happy? Yes. Oh, the rumpus and the thumpus, the bumpus, the shrieking. What a squibble and squabble and bubble and squeaking as four pampered pitchers of poochet pong reeking leapt out through the gate all chuffing and cheeking. Freedom, adventure and fun they were seeking as straight down the street they went eagerly streaking. The tip, oh the tip, what a glorious spot. Oh, the scum and the ooze and the muck and the rot. The tip cried our Bella and promptly went squat. While Billy explored a nice mountain of grot and bowl rolled in something, I won't tell you what. It was whiffy and sniffy and slimy and hot. Oh, imagine what that could be. Then Molly, the mutt, with a mischievous grin, lured our blue to the a mud pool and pushed him right in. So with mud from his dainty white paws to his chin, he let out a joyful uproar din. While Bolly played games with an old rabbit skin and Moo beat the, a tune with a tail on a tin. They're having glorious fun in the tip. I mm, wonder what the owners will say when they come home. I don't think they're going to be very clean. But alas, the Poochet pack, now bold and headstrong, were quite unaware that they'd stayed there too long. So that's when, from Jim's yard, came the sound of a gong. And our Molly and Moo said, That's dinner, so long. They just looked at each other and something was wrong. They were dirty and dagging. Oh, what a pong. Pooches are absolutely filthy. Mm. So they slunk home in silence that droopy tail for all grimy and smelly and tangled and sore. They timidly, nervously scratched at the door. Mm. You can tell by their way they're walking, they're a little bit scared, all right. I wonder what's going to happen. When it opened, their mistress collapsed on the floor while her husband declared, this will happen no more, and padlocked the garden gate just to make sure. Straight into a bathtub, all frothing and foaming, with gallons of poochette, all sudsing and doming. Then ouch, 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 to the brushing and combing. No more stretching the legs, no more light-hearted roaming, and worse, yes, far worse, 
No more tip gastronoming, just day after day of at homing. Business Hall made a deal far too rash and his shares hit rock bottom and his fortunes went crash. Though his fists he did clench and his teeth he did gnash, overnight he was bankrupt, yes, clean out of cash. Very soon life on Poff Street was not very flash and he found himself dining on sausage and mash. So yeah, he, he um, lost a lot of money, didn't have much left. Wonder what's going to happen. Every day his depression and misery grew. To his wife he said, Gertrude, we're finished, we're through. A goodbye to the house and the very best view and the shiny green lawn and Ferrari or two. They had to move downtown next door to guess who. Mm, he's not very happy. He doesn't want to really mix with them. You've got it. The junkyard of Molly and Moo. And it looks like you can see him here. He doesn't really want to interact with them. He doesn't want to know them. He threw tantrums and hid behind glasses and hat, ignoring the neighbours, refusing to chat. Built a six foot high fence, Molly soon saw to that, and placed a paste about mur murmuring things like, oh drat. He wasn't very happy living beside them. He didn't want to speak to him. He didn't want to do anything. But in time, he slowed down. He took up knitting, grew fat, and his dogs got a nod or a rub or a pat. He ended up starting to enjoy life and giving them a bit of a pat. I think they'd love that. So the four pitched dogs in the end had it made with two houses to choose from two gardens to raid, and whenever they wanted a long esplanade. So they could start to go out whenever they wanted to. With their friends to the tip, where they wrestled and played, the world was now theirs to explore, to explore and invade, and they began, sorry, and the gang became known as Jim's Jackyard, Junkyard Brigade. Hmm. So do you think the dogs were happy with everything being rich? No. So it's, it's really what you make of it. Although their family was rich, their life was boring. So it just shows you um, money doesn't always make you happy, does it? It's the fun that you make in life. And I actually love this story. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it the, um, as much as me. The message was very clear. You don't need money to be happy. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Um, have a great week and we'll enjoy another book next week. Okay. Bye.